Hi guys, Mike D. Kenev, Movement is Life. It is Tuesday, and Tuesday is Double Tap Tuesday. Okay, I'm not done with Double Tap in a while. January was a crazy month. The conference, I was super busy. Uh, I got under the weather a little bit for a couple of weeks, so I, I didn't do a double tap. So here's your double tap for today. Okay, the first thing I'm going to address is three promotions to third degree black belt. Out of the last MLK black belt testing that took place in Philadelphia, uh, three people this year are being promoted so far to third degree black belt. Okay, there might be a couple more at the conference when I go uh, to Pennsylvania, but as far as I'm concerned right now, three people from that group are officially being promoted to third degree black belt. The first one being Frankie. All right, Frankie tested at in Philadelphia for his black belt, and that's also where I of originally met him. He came as a student from one of my instructors up north, and the rest is history. Frankie moved to Florida, and then he tested for his black belt where I first met him. How about that for karma? Uh, Frankie, I love you. Congratulations on the third degree black belt. You are so dedicated to the, my system. I really love you. Also, Frankie this year trained with the uh, uh, Dark Horse when uh, the Dark Horse came from Israel. He was one of the people I brought in to train with us, and that was extremely tough training. So here we go, Frankie. You are now a third degree black belt. The second third degree black belt I'm promoting from the group is Jay the Russian, Jay Hartzell. Okay, same thing here. Super dedicated. Wolf Series comes to all the conferences. Uh, sir, we love you. You are credit to our organization. You, you run your church. Uh, I, I, I really love you, sir. you third degree black belt. Congratulations on your promotion. And the last third degree black belt getting promoted from that group is Eddie Diaz, the Mexican. Now, the Mexican, the Mexican. Okay. Uh, Eddie Diaz, uh, there's so much love for Eddie Diaz in this uh, organization. I don't have to tell you, sir, we love you. You are now officially uh, promoted to third degree black belt organization. Okay, so let's go now to the second subject of the double tap. The second chapter of the double tap is holsters. Okay, so after the shooting in Parkland, I decided that I want to conceal carry again. I let my concealed uh, weapon permit expire a long time ago. I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to carry a gun for personal reasons. I always felt comfortable uh, with only a knife and I, I didn't care. With things changing, active shooters, this and that, uh, I want to be armed, so I applied for my concealer permit, obviously I got it, and now I carry a weapon, okay, uh, I carry a Glock 17 full size, I don't like small guns, I don't like Glock 43, I don't like Glock 19, I like Glock 17C, that's my weapon that I like, that's what I carry, I used to actually carry a Bull M545, but I, me going to Glock 17 was actually going down, okay, so with that in mind, let's talk holsters, okay? The holster I use for dry fire is my old Phobos. It's angled like that. You can't get those anymore. It's all series. And first, when I got my concealed weapon permit, I was carrying that and a large shirt over it. And then Chrissy kept telling me, it looks, it, you, everybody knows you carry a gun. It's not concealed weapon, okay? So uh, I couldn't carry this anymore. It was just too obvious because it's outside the, the, uh, the waist pants. So I couldn't carry that. I switched then to what Garrett long time ago recommended, the Phobos that goes into the pants. This for a long time has been a, a holster that all of us in the organization pair uh, Garrett's request or Garrett uh, uh, recommendation we were using. I used that, but I didn't like the shape of it. It's bulky, it's not comfortable. So I only carried that for a couple of days. Then. I got this holster from Phobos. It's very similar to all those alien uh, holsters and it goes around nice and this and that. I really liked it. It's very comfortable, but it's a pain in the ass to put it on and put it off the belt and this and that. So I, I just gave it up. Okay, so uh, then I tried originally Glock, leather. The problem with that, you can't put your gun in. Then I dropped that as well. Okay, uh, then I tried. This is a, a competition holsters. It's very super comfortable, it's very light, but the problem is because it's competition also and you can come out, I was afraid that if I move the wrong way, the fucking gun falls out of the holster so that I could use as well. Okay, then after a few years, Garrett says, uh, guys, Frontline, new Israeli holster, Frontline, uh, Kydex. A lot of my students are Frontline. I personally don't like the Frontline. I actually like the Four Boosters better. Uh, this is Kydex. It's actually a better quality uh 
holster, but I actually like always the focus better, uh, the regular plastic. So I never, see it's brand new, I never used it. So I tried it a couple of days for it, and again, I didn't like it, so I didn't use it. Uh, there's another holster I got uh, when Gary was teaching the night course, and we put the uh, flashlights on the Glocks. He said, get this holster from this website. I don't remember the website. And uh, I got this. Very good uh, holster, Kydex. The problem is it's very bulky because it's uh, supposed to fit the, my, the, the flashlight on the Glock, which I don't carry on a regular base. So again, it was too bulky in my pants and I gave it up. All right, so what holster do I use now? Enter Orpaz. Okay, for the record, I don't know the people who own Orpaz. I don't get money from Opaz. I didn't get even a free freaking uh, uh, horse from them. It's actually Ed Duplessis says to me, I went to a gun show and there's a new Israeli holster. I got one, I like it. So obviously I ordered it. Uh, this is the Opaz uh, holster. It's made out of hard plastic. It reminds me a lot of the Phobos, but a little bit better quality, okay? Not, and I love Phobos. I will always say uh, very loyal to this in dry fire. I always use this, it's very comfortable. But what I like about the Opaz, when the Opaz comes in, it gives you nine options how to carry that gun inside your waistbands, outside the waistbands, it comes with accessories. So out of one holster, you really get nine holsters. And this holster sits in my pants low, so it's really concealed. So uh, that's the holster I use now. It's called Opaz. It's very cheap, it's 20 fucking fucking dollars. $25 for a holster I absolutely love. So this is the one I carry now. I like it. Also, there is a little thing here. So it tells you if your Glock is charged or not. We Israelis, we don't keep a bullet in the chamber. Uh, I don't want to get into this debate here on the YouTube, but we don't keep a bullet in the chamber. I don't feel it's necessary. There's all kinds of reasons for, uh, for it. That's the way I carry. I will never carry a bullet in the chamber. The only time I carried a bullet in the chamber in my life was in Lebanon when I was at the Bofor Castle. As soon as we crossed the border, we charged our weapons. When I did the first intifada in the Naplus, uh, in the Balata refugee camp in Naplus, in the West Bank, we didn't have bullets in our chambers, okay? I think it's unnecessary. Uh, people in America will argue until tomorrow. Again, I'm not entering debates. I do the way I do it for my entire life, and it works for me. So that's not a debate I'm entering here. But I like that the holster tells me if the gun is charged or not, if the trigger on the Glock is charged or not. So that's my two cents. This is the holster I use now for my carry-on. It's called Opaz. Congratulations to the three people that got the uh, third degree black belts. Double tap Tuesday. Mike Lickenek, movement is life. Go get it.